Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, February 26, 2020 edition of the Science and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from San Francisco, California. Yesterday, German tech website Heiser reported that some odd fraudulent PayPal charges are hitting users in Germany. While PayPal initially didn't comment, a security researcher, Markus Fenske, reported to Heise that he reported a security issue to PayPal that he actually received a bug bounty for and PayPal said they had fixed, but he believes isn't completely fixed and that's related to virtual credit cards. Now, if you get a credit card from PayPal, PayPal works with MasterCard on that, then you can assign the virtual credit card number to your Google Pay account. And this number is supposed to be only useful with Google Pay. So if it gets compromised, well, an other, uh, the thief cannot use it uh, for anything because it's sort of linked uh, to your Google Pay account and it should really be useless. Now, one issue with these credit card numbers is that first of all, they apparently can be used with other uh, payment methods, for example, with Amazon Pay and such, and also the CVVV number, the three digits on the back, are never actually verified with these uh, virtual credit card numbers. So that makes it a little bit easier to guess them, in particular since the first eight, so the first half of the 16 digits are fixed for these credit card numbers. Now, the first four to six numbers, uh, they're usually referred to as the BIN or the bank identification numbers, and they would be linked to PayPal here in this case. But in with these virtual credit card numbers, well, uh, PayPal then fixed a couple additional numbers. So the first eight numbers are always the same. Also, there is a chance that uh, these virtual credit card numbers leak via NFC from your Android devices if you're using them as part of Android of Google Pay. So uh, that way they could also potentially uh, be leaking. Hard to tell what exactly happened here. Uh, PayPal eventually responded to Heise saying that none of, sort of their systems here were compromised, but just brute forcing credit card numbers or them leaking via NFC, of course, that wouldn't sort of technically be really a compromise of personal data from uh, PayPal. At this point, this only appears to affect uh, PayPal users in Germany. At least that's where the only reports uh, came in from. If you experience similar issues, uh, well, uh, let me know. Well, yesterday I mentioned Google Chrome 80 and how it sort of added this a little bit controversial uh, deep linking feature. Google Chrome 80 has been released now. It also fixes three security flaws. One of these security flaws, CVE 2020-6418, is actually already exploited in the wild. This vulnerability is a type confusion vulnerability in Google's V8 JavaScript engine. And talking about browser updates and sort of some of these privacy controversies and such that uh, come with that, Firefox now enabled DNS over HTTPS via Cloudflare for all Firefox users running in the US. Now, the rollout started uh, today and it will take a couple of weeks for it to completely roll out to all Firefox users. But let me know if you spot your instance of Firefox switching uh, to uh, to Cloudflare and to DNS over HTTPS. The controversial part here is not so much the DNS over HTTPS. Uh, that can be seen as a privacy feature, but that you are sort of being pushed into using Cloudflare as your DNS provider. And Microsoft is moving ahead with FIDO2 and passwordless authentication and makes it available to more customers. FIDO2 is now available to authenticate to Azure AD in hybrid environments. And this is so far available as a public preview. So not by default, but anybody can sign up if you want to give it 
a try. At this point, I would certainly recommend uh, that you try it out, uh, see how it works for you. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, encourage a couple users, the more tech savvy, some that are not so tech savvy, to play a little bit uh, with it, uh, to uh, see how it works for them. FIDO2, I mentioned it many times before, has some really interesting properties uh, to sort of make authentication really more secure. So, well, I mentioned before, I'm a fan of it and uh, certainly hope uh, that it will find more adoption. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.